Welcome into Rover Sports. We're here with uh, Peter Birds. I, I shocked you a little bit there. Peter Birds here, um, putting on the radio voice, and he's he's part of the SEC network. He joins the fans in Philadelphia, and uh, Peter, it's just great to have you out. Man. Thanks for joining. I love it because I, I love what you guys are doing, bringing in like kind of like the, the SEC lifestyle up towards Philly. Because when I've been to Philly before, whether it's be for the, uh, the the Phillies themselves or whether it be for the Eagles. Who have the most unbelievable fans, good and bad sometimes. I feel like like that kind of personifies what we do down here in the Southeastern Conference, where the fans have a true care about it. So you're doing the great work bringing it out They're there. They're rabid, and you compliment oh, yeah. the Eagles fans. So you'll be okay. No beer on you. And yeah. you'll, you'll I'm not be wearing the Santa hat, so I'm okay. Yeah. Right you'll, you'll be fine with the beer. There's no snow out there today here in Birmingham. Yeah, no snow in oh, Birmingham. So, so Peter, you're from, you're from Texas, right? You went to college in yeah. San Antonio, so you you have a big background of the Texas A&M Aggies, yeah. and they go out to UCLA, and this is a game that, you know, uh, Trevor Knight needed the, the one-yard sneak to beat Josh Rosen, and UCLA, no Mazzoni, goes home. I would actually be stunned if Texas A&M can win this game with Nick Starkle and Kellen Mond, you know, playing with Kirk. Now. Yeah, it's a great point, I mean, because that's one of the opportunities that Texas A&M is going to have this year when they're going to play UCLA, and this is a big year for, for Kevin Sumlin and that whole squad. I mean, and over the last couple of years, they win five games, six games in a row, and they're undefeated. And everyone says, oh my goodness, this is going to be our year. And then they kind of fall apart. I think the big thing for Texas A&M this season is that they changed the strength and conditioning coach. And so what that means is that they were used to be all about how fast and quick pitch, uh, quick twitch that they could get. But at the end of the year, they kind of tired out. And you saw that the teams could just run on them because they were so tired. I think what's happened now is that they're changing it. They said, we want to be fast. We're already fast. We need to have the endurance late into the season. And that's hopefully what the Aggies are going to have. Absolutely, because we, you look at the Kenny Hill game for South yeah. Carolina where, where, where they came out and lit the world on fire. And you actually took my next question. I was going to talk about the, the over-conditioning. I was going to say, because they go so hard in the summer, that, you know, how could that be the same team that beat Auburn 21-17 and then Nick Fitzgerald? That, that was his coming out party. Yeah. I, I just... That looked like a whole different defense yeah. against Mississippi State. And, and, that, and that's what happens a little bit late into the season. John Chavis at Texas A&M, who came from LSU, listen, they have the guys, right? They have the the, the, the dudes that are going to try to work that hard. Right. It's just a matter of being able to get it done this upcoming season. Um, and frankly, I, I think Kevin needs to have that for him to stay there in college station. For Absolutely. I want to bounce around here. We got Mississippi State, Nick Fitzgerald. This was the guy. The field goal gets shanked against South yeah. Alabama. They go to UMass. They, they, they play BYU. They kind of go into this tunnel, and then they come out, and then Texas A&M, and the Egg Bowl happens, and now fit Nick Fitzgerald is this rock star. Yeah. Then, they, then against Miami of Ohio, they only won by one point. I'm not going to say are we overhyping Nick Fitzgerald, but... I mean, the hype is pretty surreal so, off with this offense. Funny story, right now. whenever I was down in, in, in Starkville for Mississippi State for the first time, um, Dak Prescott was still playing, right? It was yep. Dak's, Dak's junior year, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it was senior year. But, you know, everyone's talking about Dak Prescott. Dan Mullen pulls us into his office and he says, the kid you need to be watching is Nick Fitzgerald. He was so excited to see what Nick was going to be able to do. He knew Dak was going to be great, but he was almost more excited about what Nick was going to be able to do. So Dan Mullen has seen that. And I think you go back and look at what Dak was able to do, Tim Tebow, these are all both quarterbacks, and Dan Mullen has kind of been the quarterback whisperer, and we're seeing that out of Fitzgerald. I mean. He, he did look very good in the spring game. I think it was four or five interceptions. But then yeah. again, I think they only had maybe, maybe you and I should have suited up for them wide receiver spring wise game. because yeah. they just didn't have enough healthy sure. bodies. So, sure. um, and again, I think when you start talking about how they're going to be picked, they'll probably be picked maybe six or seventh in the West. And it used to upset Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen was like, you know what? That's just kind of become one of those things. It's just like a rite of passage, and it gives us a chip on our shoulder, and that's kind of how old he's coached him. It's interesting. I saw Fitzgerald in high school. He didn't get many offers. He played in kind of a wishbone offense. Yeah. And then if, if, if Mullen had all that confidence in Fitzgerald, were you so surprised that he was getting pulled and Damian Williams, they were doing the Sanchez Tebow musical chairs last year? Because it didn't seem like he had a vote of confidence, but now it looks genius because of that. Well, what, know, it was, adversity. what it was, was he gave Nick every opportunity to be the starter, right? You know, he said, hey, you're going to have an opportunity when it came through. 
Nick just really wasn't ready. And it's a lot, I mean, it's tough. I, mean, I guess, you know, against any opponent, being a, you know, a, a starting quarterback, that's, that's a big responsibility. And I think, honestly, when Damian Williams came in, he kind of made Nick just chill out a little bit, relax, and just go, okay, maybe now is, now I just need to stop getting so hyped up. Let's just play some football, get back to basics, and that's what worked. Sure. Peter, when you look at, at the quarterbacks in the SEC, they, Austin Allen gets mentioned, Drew Locke, even Jacob, uh, Jacob Eason. Yeah. Um, but Drew Locke, I think that this guy's like a, a top 10 pick in the NFL. Like I look at him against Georgia, and, and the guy, the guy's arm strength is just, I, I haven't seen it much like Drew Locke. Dude. Like he's not, he's not, you know, Jacob Eason's six foot six, and you got Drew yeah. Locke, he's got, he's got the bangs over, he's got almost like your haircut where he's he just does. Kind of like, he looks like a kid, and kind he, of. And he, he's a young guy, but he does, and that's the offense that they're bringing to Missouri right now, is a lot of quick pitch, a lot of, a lot of, Josh you know, getting Jamal Moore. Yeah, they're, they're going to start trying to throw the ball for a ton of yards, so, um, Drew's going to be something that's, that's going to be one of the more potent offenses, honestly, in the entire SEC this year. When they went to Florida and LSU, do you think that they just don't have that confidence? They think, ah, oh, we're Missouri, you know, it's we're 28 point dogs on the road. Because yeah. you saw that offense versus Arkansas at the end of the year. You see it versus Georgia. They're a completely yeah. different team on the road. And with Heupel, if they can't get the, the offense, like, if they can't get a first down, it just, it just seemed like Drew doesn't know how great he can be. And when he goes into Death Valley, he, he just kind of, you, you know what I mean? He didn't well, play with that same kind of confidence. But you're also like, you're also going up against you're also going against Florida's secondary, which had you know between Tease Tabor and Quincy Wilson, you had NFLers yeah. for LSU. Yeah, that's DBU in the last couple of years. So you know that the competition got a little bit crazier for, for Drew. But that's something that he's working on in his progressions this year. We're talking here with Peter Burns, SEC Network at, at ESPN. You're on fine, Bob. He's everywhere. You can catch him. This is a great week for Peter, and we thank him for taking time out of his really busy schedule. I have one final question for you. Of course, we got caught up in the Jeremy Johnson hype a couple of years ago, but now it's so interesting. If Trayvon Durrell got his feet in against, I, I, against Auburn, against yeah. Auburn Gus might not be here right now. Right, unless Miles we'll might still be here. Right. And then you look at, at Baylor and, and all of the, you know, all the turbulence there, obviously. If he goes on to win the SEC West, it would be because of Baylor and Doral's feet. It would be kind of unbelievable it's if Malzahn can we're talking, we're talking a half a second. And that's, that's what yes. the butterfly effect of those decisions. And that's how good the parity is here in the SEC where, I mean, literally a, a two tenths of a second can be the difference between coaches staying and coaches going and recruiting classes going from this direction or another. So, they could win the SEC West this year. It's unbelievable, you know, and, and I think Stidham's going to be full because we camp that way. Um, they're going to be able to run the ball a little bit. Um, Kevin Steele's done a good job you know, getting that defense together. So they are probably the biggest threat to Alabama throughout this season. Peter Burns, SEC Network, joins Rover Sports.